there. Hey everybody, this is Shane with the Rod Report. I'm here today with the lovely, the fierce, the legendary Adrian Ming. And we're here to talk a little bit about Friday the 13th, or wine that she makes. So make it, I know my limitations. <laughs> <laughs> I know fine wine. <laughs> But I put it up with the best yeah. It's called the wine itself is called Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake wine. And we might talk a little bit about Jason Rising, the fan film that just came out not too long ago. Right? We're it's almost up to the first anniversary. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I, we're closing in on a million views. I so saw that. so I want your audience to like watch it and, and then I know they're gonna love it. Uh, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. But if you love it, make sure you tell all your friends because we want to show Hollywood what it's really passionate independent filmmaking is all about. Like the first one. The first Absolutely. One was and this one is just as independent and it's just as I mean passionate, I'm, I'm right? very passionate. You can tell it's a it's a it's a love project. Right. And you can tell a lot of love was put into it just by how it was presented, right. the characters, the you know, everything. The whole story. The production, yeah, the storyline, the production. It looks it And looks, all the Easter eggs. Easter eggs. No I have spoilers. to share this when I saw Jason Rising. And, you know, fan films, some of them are good. Yeah. But some of them, and when they're good, I like to help them promote them. Yes. But it's so funny because people were on, on social media, and they're going, I loved all the Easter eggs. And I said to my husband, that's funny. I didn't see one Easter egg in that whole movie. I didn't know what that meant, you know? I had no clue. I, I'm, I'm the only the reference I have to Easter egg is in a basket. You got it? Yes. It's a generational thing. Of course. You know, so, uh, it's, a, it's, in a manner of speaking, a trophy for you. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So, so let's talk a little bit. Let's, let's kind of, let's jump back a little bit to 1980. Oh, that's a long time. That's a leap. I was not even thought of yet. My oldest brother was one year old. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, no. He wasn't even born yet either. I think about that. He was born in 1981. I was taken. Oh my goodness. But anyway, yes. let's, let's talk a little bit, just real quick, about like, like what, what was it like to be... We should tell your audience, by the way, we are at the... Days of the Dead. Days of the Dead in Indianapolis. And all the noise you're hearing is like a costume contest and they have such great things going on all the time here that it was hard to find a quiet place. Yes, there's a the panel room right here and that's where all the noise is coming from. Yeah, but it's, this was the quietest place we could find, believe it or not. She's not lying. This is literally the I quietest mean, spot. there's so many people here, it's crazy. It's, um, it's, it's So many celebs and great um, celebs from bumping into everybody from the horror movies. From American Pie to right. the Halloweens to Friday the 13th and, and even... Jason and Michael Myers wandering all over the halls. Even a creeper from... Jeepers Creepers is here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see him. <laughs> yes, he's here. He's uh, I think he's kind of he's kind of on the opposite side of where you are. I didn't so, see him. Yeah. But yeah, let's talk a little bit. Like, so when you let's talk about like reading the coming into how did you come to be a part of uh, uh, auditioning? Oh my gosh! For... It was literally an entire summer of casting uh, in New York City. They saw everybody from the ages of like it was a a call in backstage, which is where they used to, uh, before social media, you know, and all of this, no cell phones, folks, you know, you read newspapers, and the trade paper is called backstage, and in backstage, you would look to see what auditions were going for, you know, you basically audition for anything and everything that you thought you would be right for, and so the thousands of people showed up as you know, uh, and everybody in New York City, uh, at the age of like, you know, it said uh, young uh, camp uh, counselors, and so everybody, you know, in their teens and their twenties, just was there, and yeah. guys and gals, and I think it was like number three hundred and forty-two or 
seriously. Yeah. And then they whittle it down, and I got a call back, and then I got a call back, and then I was partnered up with different people like Kevin Bacon and Harry and Ned and, and all these other people like the kid, uh, Willie Adams, who gets off in the first scene. You know, he didn't quite make it into the finals, but he was smart enough to say, you know, work on this project. And by saying that, he actually got himself worked into the project. Yeah, so that he got, he got, and he's the one who gets off first, right, like right you said. Away, yeah. Right, and the girl that was with him, Deborah Hayes, was his real girlfriend. Oh, that's who was fun. an actress. But you see, you know, you got to think out of the box. Like, yeah, I just, absolutely. I want to act, but how can I get to the set? To kind of weasel his way in. Yeah, he did, but the smart kid, not, right? Yeah, absolutely. And no, a good weasel. Yeah, yeah, not, not, not like a bad, <laughs> not a bad weasel. No. But good <laughs> of course not. So, and and you, so I just literally kept on coming back to call back after call back. All the way down to because they didn't know who I was going to be or who the other girls were going to be, and they narrowed it down to say maybe 15 girls, and then maybe down to 10 girls, and then five girls that might be Alice. And we did screen tests, okay. and uh, it was a wicked screen test where. Uh, you know, Sean was, if Sean could have the director, yes. like, okay, uh, I want you to jump like you're scared, I want you to crawl like someone's, you know, after you, and you have to get away from them. And so it was so physical in a contained little room with yeah. a video camera, you know? And so uh, it was a wild audition, but by that time, I knew because of all callbacks over yeah. the summer yeah. and you have to understand it's so low budget but they they were smarter than to get the best cast of people in New York City who cast from the theater community and that's why we got they got Kevin Bacon because he was doing off Broadway so was I so was Janine so you know and, and Ned and the guy who played Ned Mark Nelson he's still there and you know uh, it was just everybody was the best of, uh, of that they could Bring in yeah. and uh, and uh, the bottom line was I I think I nailed it with the screen is what I say you know I, I believe that and I mean, the, so after that day uh, that audition I guess it was in the morning was that afternoon I got a call oh. from Sean uh, on my home phone uh, because he's, you know you had uh, basically an answering service or an answer. You know, <laughs> Uh, uh, it that, used to be quiet. <laughs> it, it, it was quiet. Wasn't it? it was semi quiet. <laughs> you know, you're horror fans, you can deal with that. Yeah, right? a little we're, shock. We're, we're used to, we're used to little... screams and jump scares. Right? <laughs> so, um, so you know, all these said, you're my Alice. And yeah, we started shooting, I swear to God, with the two weeks. Boom. It was the day after Labor Day. So all of us went into a little van and drove up, you know, all the weekend buses yeah. drove up together. The day after Labor Day, it was a Tuesday morning, we met at Columbus Circle where you are all piled into a van, drove up to Blairstown, New Jersey, to a Boy Scout camp that is still there, yep. and does tours. That's, that's good. Cool. Best tours, of course, are when the people were actually in the movie. <laughs> but, um, but the place looks wonderful. It looks just like it did in the movie. Now, what's it called again? The camp what? Novi Bosco, okay, and it's called Sam Pond. And it's Novi Bosco, I thought was an uh, Indian name. It's camp. It's no B, North Bergen, in North Bergen, New Jersey. Bosco is Boy Scouts. So, so it sounds like a. Yeah, it sounds like, almost like an Indian name, but it's really Boy Scout. Oh, like an acronym. Yeah. 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 Abbreviation. Yeah. That's it. That's you pretty good. Yeah. You got it. That's pretty good. Don't judge yourself. <laughs> I do that. We all do that. <laughs> yeah. We absolutely. Well, that's, that's really cool. Um, so, tell me a little bit about getting to work with. Uh, that's fun. What can I say? She's the best. That, she was the best. best. She was. She did. She was very. Just. She comes off so sweet and so innocent, and I don't know. Just flips a switch, and the crazy comes out. That's what happens when you, when you, no one's watching your child and you drowns in a lake. It's, you know, you get upset. <laughs> the, the, I mean, it's very understandable. It's understandable, but um, she killed all. Of Alice's friends, you know, and it's not very nice. No, I and she's so. lying about being a good friend of the Christie's too. She was. I, 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 I a good that friend from the start. Of the Christie's. 
at she all. She was not. At all. Lies. Lies. Pure lies. So, but she had a, a huge psychological problem. But she had a big heart. She loved you know, her. She, she loved, loved her, her son. son to death. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So she was just an amazing lady, and uh, I give her so much credit because she brought. I always say she brought my tennis game. She brought my acting game. You know. She because she can't work with a genius like her. I'm sure she had a lot of great tips. And no, no tips at all. She said to me, because you have to understand, acting is reaction, right? When you're yes. playing against somebody as incredible as she is, you have to do nothing except be in the moment. So as an actor, you're trained to be in the moment. But when Betsy Palmer would look at me in a scene immediately, I was in the moment. Because she would just, just own, own it. I mean, I remember to this moment, to this day, I still get these books, here they are. <laughs> when I look at her, that moment when she looks like this, and she goes, yes, Jason. And, and Jason was my son. Very convincing. Before she comes at me for the first time, that whole thing when my voice cracks, you know, you can't fake that. No. That is being in the moment because you are scared shitless of this this crazy woman. Yeah. Because she honestly went from sweet to crazy, and you saw it as an audience. Yeah. And that's why the movie so holds up today. Of course. I call it uh, the perfect story between Betsy. Tom Savini with his special effects and Harry Manfredini with his music and, and then of course Sean Cunningham and then of course uh, the cinematographer. I mean it all yeah, it all, it all blended so well so and well. that's why it's the classic it, it is today. It is, so truly. And I think sometimes in independent movies you have to get so creative and the passion comes through like with face and lines and yeah. Uh, that passion projects. The passion projects, that money actually, the fact that we didn't have money made people become more creative. Yeah. You know, they had to think it out and figure it out. And, I mean, you were using fire hoses for, uh, for the rain. But I mean, they called the fire department to come up because we couldn't afford that. And, and, so, and the reason we think everything's, uh, you go, oh, it's so great because it's dark. But that's because we couldn't afford it. You know, it's, so people would turn we turn on the parking uh, the parking lights on cars. Yeah. You know, I'm that's, kidding. Yeah. On night scenes, you know, to get more light. That's yeah. that's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's very crazy. Yeah, it was amazing. So t um, tell I think me. about it, I think about how incredible the whole experience was because I it's like it was yesterday for me. I can't remember in real life last week. But I can remember the entire trip. Of course. You know? I mean, that's, that's there. Yeah. You know, that's, Forever. That's, that's how it's, we're going to leave. It's etched. It's etched. Yeah, very much so. And I mean, it's, you know, it, that's a, you know, it's something that, uh, that you're not going to, that's not easily forgotten. Right. It's something that's always going to be there. Right. And that's, you know, that's what's so great about it. Um, I was going to ask about, continuing with Betsy Palmer, asking about the choreography of your your scene. Yeah, it's funny you should say choreography because when I found Sean Cunningham's notes, um, so you have to understand, I never thought this movie uh, at the time. I doubted it was going to ever be finished with having, uh, having to go back to the investors to ask for more money, for more cameras, more the slow mo cameras, and everything. So uh, I would grab things out of like my little photos because I'm an artist in real life. Yeah. That was my you know, major in college. And so um, I, uh, after that night, we started as a son went down and didn't finish till the sun rose. And he had literally choreographed, because it was so dangerous. Yeah. This, I mean, we had no stunt people. Betsy was like, okay, this is gonna be down and dirty because you can't fake it for film. You can't fake it for anything, but especially film. And the reason it looks so real is because she is truly smashing my head <laughs> in the sand. And you see that looks. How could that happen? Well, it happened. And she's so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything you see really happened, and that's why. I mean, she was a method actress. Yeah. 
she said, I'm not part of any countries and neither should you if you want to live. And that's truly, that's what I mean about bringing yeah. my game up. It's like there wasn't any, like, cold anything. You went for it. You just went for it. And she taught me so freaking much. And I'm a trained actress before I met her. Yeah. But that was like Stella Adler training, you know? It was like amazing. So, uh, yeah, she, that he did choreograph it. And I grabbed those notes um, out of, as the sun was rising because I was going to make a collage with the Polaroids and, yeah. the, and the notes. And when I actually looked at them, because I, I threw them all in a box with the screen, the original ring, my boots, my script, my original script, uh, everything. And I didn't open it until 25 years later when I moved to Oregon, wine country. And uh, that's when I found these notes. I looked at them, and it says, like, Evie does this, Betsy does this, Tom does this, Tasso does this. How many notes do you think there was? With the coffee things and all, two skin pages, I had them, 13 notes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> not 12, not 14. So I made a poster for Sean, I made one for me, and I wrote on the top of it, Ballet du Machete. That's, that's awesome. Because it truly was choreographed, yeah. like you said. So, uh, so no one would get that, because it could have happened. Yeah. So I mean, easily. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to, I had a, a poster that ran out. It, I, I think I remember hearing remember about that? that. I should really resurrect those notes because they're so special. And it's the only thing that I try to do that I understand Sean has uh, oh. hanging on his wall, that poster. Yeah. And he was the one who said, do me a favor, change it from uh, just to Friday the 13th, not ballet to machete, and the fans are going to love you. Make it up so they can see because he was amazed that of course. Yeah. Who would think that anyone would grab something out of the trash? Yeah. <laughs> You're a cool. I mean, that's that's kind of like a little board. <laughs> Not really. It yeah. just it was just I knew I knew I wanted to make something because the experience was so incredible. I just wanted to make something to remind me about it because I yeah. honestly didn't know if they'd find the money for the post. Yeah. You know? But once they did, oh my god, it was the sister. And it is a very long, successful history. And uh, so let's step away from uh, films. Let's talk about wine. Well, I kind of hinted to you before. Yeah. <laughs> so I moved up to, with my husband, up to um, wine country in southern Oregon 17 years ago. I can't believe it's been 17 years. And I've always been into wines. I grew up in a family that loved wines and then I married into a family that loved truly fine wines and new wines. So I learned a lot more. And then we moved to wine country uh, and we went to the wineries and the one uh, that was closest to us happened to be our favorite was family owned and operated. Well, lo and behold, they were the Friday the 13th fans. And they quote unquote into their family. Please join our family. And I always say it was, you know, vision boards. I never had it, it on my vision. I was tired. I was there to paint. That I finally was going to do my my first love. You know, my first passion. I always think is is art. But I started acting very young, and I yeah. love acting. So it was one of the other approach. And art became my therapy after. All the acting and stuff. Well, after the stuff, you know, it truly did. Yeah. But um, it, it's what got me through it all. But um, they asked me to join their family, and I said, okay, well, sure. <laughs> I don't see a downside there. And uh, I ran their tasting room for a year and learned everything I didn't know about wines. Uh, and uh, in that year, we came up with the idea of Crystal Lake Wines by Adrian King. But I don't know the wines. I know my limitations. They have an incredible winemaker there. And, and a new one just came up from Napa. And, and these wines are tremendously fabulous. And they're, they're half, the, half the price of like Napa wines. And no tax in Oregon. No sales tax. Oh, Sweet. And so, um, I'm moving to Oregon. Yeah, right? <laughs> And so um, we came up with Crystal Lake Wines by Adrian King and on Facebook, and it's still here on the page. And so 
they'll like it. And sure enough, it blew out their website. Now they blew on your website. And we knew we were onto something. That was almost 13 years ago. That number keeps on popping up. It's, it's your lucky number. It is. I'm, my husband's birthday is on this new day. Really? It's just going to fall you. For, the well, I always say 13 is my lucky number. <laughs> it is. It is for my lucky number. So, getting back to it. We came up with the idea, we just, I do all my own artwork on the labels, I, I, every, every order goes through my hands, I've never ever let anybody touch it because I know how particular my 13 fans are, and every label is my artwork that is related to the film. That's, that's really cool. That's yeah, and uh, so I have... Or it's or he's Benjamin's real name. I have Lumiere Chardonnay. I have Survivor Sarah. Cabin A Seven. I mean, I got. So there's about six. There's, well, I choose three reds and three whites to keep it simple. Okay. But they change every year with vintages, you know. And so I'm always there to select the best, the best first yeah. for my shoes. <laughs> and uh, it's getting tougher to be shipped because of the heat. Yeah. So, uh, so I have to wait for pockets when it's cooler, and uh, then everybody, everybody is very, very happy to, you know, be patient. But wine will explode uh, under extreme temperatures. I know nothing about wine, so uh, that's, that's, that's a great news. thing. <laughs> People always say, "I don't know what to get." Well, that's why you have me. I choose the best ones that we have that I love, and I figure I have excellent taste. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, the rest is up to you. And needless to say, we haven't spent a penny because it's a family owned, and everything that comes out of there has to be really excellent because it's only their name and it's only my name. So uh, you know, I won't put my name on anything that isn't worthy. Of so, course. So there Your you go. Royalty. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you for that. I'm thinking King, of course, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's been going strong. Uh, it's, it's happy campers who get happier when they pop a bottle of this lid wine. He's done like 23 weddings. Oh my goodness, that's really cool to think that people... Yeah, Mother's Day is huge. Really? Oh well. Right? It's it makes a lot of sense huge. now. Halloween is obviously huge, Christmas is huge. Um, but it's just been... Uh, 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 I thought it was retiring when I made it. And I've never been busier. You know? <laughs> but it's passion. It's, of course. It's, it's fun. And when it stops getting fun and you're passionate. Maybe that's when you'll slow down. Yeah. One of these days, uh, right? I mean, enough is enough already. <laughs> haven't you done enough? <laughs> it's so much. Well, we finally did. We did an audio book called Final Fantasy Support Group. I was going to bring that up. By Grady Hendrix. It's on Audible, which is, oh my God, a mind blower. People want to do it. Write a book uh, uh, forever. Yeah. I could never go back because of all the hell that happened after the movie came out. But, um, boy, this book I was, need to read it. was so cathartic. No, you need to listen to me well, read it to you. Okay. That is better. It's 13 hours. I swear to God. 13 hours. How could you plan it? How? How? And, uh, they did that on purpose. They no, did, did I it. did. I recorded it. Kids, you know, you can speed me up, but, uh, <laughs> you can speed me up. But I did all the voices, uh, not knowing I was going to do all, I thought I was just doing the main character. And yeah. then I get into the realize. And then it was like, oh. You didn't know. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh my goodness. And then, of course, so that was a chat. I, I did that. That was like bucket list. And then, uh, and it's been so well received, it was actually voted best horror. Okay, yeah. Audible, on Audible, so What's thank you very much. So cool. Being that it was my first, I feel very proud of I need to, I want a copy of the book, because I'm a reader. Oh yeah, I and, love, I, and I've been signing Grady's books, and he's like, go for it. That's, yeah. I mean, you, you were the narrator, that's fair. I mean, I wish they still had cassettes. And, right? Because you know, could... they, they used to have CDs, cassettes. Yeah, I wish they had those, and I could sign those. They, but... I think they quit making those. A while ago. Yeah. And then I have Jason Rising, uh, yeah. which is, I'm sure you've been having a fan film. A fan film by Wapstone? No, I think he was part of it, but Jay Sweet, which oh, is Red right. Crow Films, oh, that's right. um, was the director on it. Uh, but uh, 
Vinnie DeSanti yes. from Wonka was, yeah. was part of it, and they're both incredible filmmakers. And uh, Jason in that, oh my God, Danny Pyle is fabulous. The acting is great. And so I'm encouraging when I when I see a good fan film, I like to encourage other people. It's on YouTube, so watch Jason Rising. We want to get it up to one million by its first anniversary, which is this August 13th. So go watch it. It's coming very And if you like it, share it with your friends. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely share it. It's like, it's, like she said, it's on YouTube. Yeah. And it is... Did it's, you like it? I loved it. Yeah. I, wa I watched it the other day, actually, because yes. I was going to watch a little bit of it yeah. back to it. But then. But it was good. Some of them are the fan films here. Yeah. You but, have fan films that are just kind of, you know, I get what you were trying, but it right. didn't work. Yeah. But this one just seemed very. And do you know they waited for the pandemic? We started before the pandemic. They did. And then, um, no spoilers, but they continued after the pandemic. So that's a long wait. That's a long wait. Yeah. And then they got it together quick so it could be released last August. So, well, so it's been almost, literally almost a year. Yeah, very close. I didn't, I didn't realize it's been. I know, time goes fast. It really yeah. does, especially when you have children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I don't, but you do. I do have two. Then you get They're to great. see them. Yeah. Grow up and yeah. become the horror fans I hope they will become. Yeah. <laughs> But, but uh, any more questions? Because I, I think I gotta go. We are we are out of time for today. But but I this thank, has been joyous. I, I want to thank. And this rotten report is not so rotten after all, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I try my best to not be too rotten, but what can I do? Oh. But I want to thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you, and and, and you can follow me on Instagram, Instagram, or Facebook. Facebook. I, I haven't gotten it as far as uh, the other one. Oh, TikTok. I've done TikTok yet, but I'm very content with Facebook and Instagram. It keeps me busy. And then go to my website if you want to see my art. Yes. My art is my first passion. And uh, check out the wine sometime if you're oh, ever yeah. in Oregon. And if you're in Oregon and you let me know, I'm available like to email me and say, We're coming, are you gonna be there? And I'm not there all the time, obviously. Yeah. But uh, if you're there and I'm in uh, four miles down the road, I'll come see you. Just you know with a click of a button. She'll a, come see you. You you come let me know. Well, I want to thank you guys for the time. If you like this, maybe someday. I would love to. I'll, I'll bring the kids. We'll take a flight. Bring the kids. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'll pour you the flight, not the kids. Not the kids. Okay. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you like this video, like and subscribe, of course. And um, about to see you back at camp. We'll see you guys back at camp. Cheers. <laughs>